Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, it's Monday morning. Come on. High energy, let's go. Good morning, good morning. South Carolina, good morning. Columbia, South Carolina. How are you today? Good morning, good morning. Boston, all right, Boston. Janine in Springfield, East Chicago, Indiana. Tammy in Columbus, good morning, Tammy. Boston, Massachusetts. I just saw that movie, um, Patriots Day, about the uh, marathon bombing. Real good movie, very, very good. Texas, good morning. Asheville, North Carolina, good morning. Showed a lot of Boston in that movie. Good morning, good morning. Cornerstone was very good yesterday. Thank you. Brooklyn, New York, good morning. How was church where you were? Vaughn Hamilton, Houston, good morning. Frankfurt, Illinois, good morning. Peoria, Illinois, wow. Hartford, Connecticut, East Coast. High Energy Monday, let's go. Rainy Los Angeles, is rainy? Come on now, the song says it never rains in Southern California. The Murphys are here, all right. Henry and Marcina, good morning. Good morning to my favorite people. Been with me for years and years. Henry Marcina Murphy, good people. Myrtle Beach, good morning. First Church, Columbus, Richton Park. Wow. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you tap the screen, you release a heart. Much appreciated. Thank you so very much. Okay, let's bring that music down so we can get into this this morning. God bless you guys. I'm glad you're with me this morning. God bless you so much. Excuse me for a second. Excuse me, excuse me. God is good, amen? God is good. He is good. And we're up for some good things today as we start the week and going into the, the week. This entire week is going to be good. Here at Cornerstone, we're going into our third week of, of the fast uh, so uh, we'll be closing it up at the end of this week or going into the weekend. So that'll be an exciting thing. Uh, we had a great time yesterday at Cornerstone. I hope it was good wherever you were in church. The power of God was evident. The preaching was strong. The fellowship was wonderful. So uh, amen. I hope it was really, really good where you were. Hope your football teams won yesterday. I got both of my picks, Atlanta and New England in the Super Bowl. Those are the two teams that I picked going into the uh, games yesterday. And uh, interesting, they were both blowouts, huh? Big, big, huge wins for Atlanta and New England. So interesting. Should be a good Super Bowl. We'll see what happens in a couple of weeks. Um, good morning, Ethel in Memphis. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus is dealing with a woman who has a physical condition in her body that's really coming from the root of a spiritual condition. Uh, scripture says she was completely bent over. Now this woman was a daughter of Abraham, according to the narrative, which means she was a woman of covenant. She was a woman that had some type of relationship with God, and yet she was completely bent over. So she's bent over looking at the ground, looking down and not up. And she could not raise herself up. Now, all of that describes uh, a lot of how we live our lives. We may not be physically bent over, but we can be emotionally bent. We can be uh, uh, mentally bent over. We even spiritually bent over. We can be living in that, that uh, mindset of looking down and not up. Focusing on the earth realm. Focusing on what is of this life. What is of this life. And... She could not raise herself up. That's what Luke says. She could not raise herself up. Couldn't elevate herself. She couldn't go above. And neither can we on our own. We can't raise ourselves up by ourselves either, can we? She had been in this place for 18 years. 
18 years. 3 into 18 is 6, so it's 6 times 6 times 6. 666, which is a scriptural number that describes this Antichrist spirit, this spirit that is rising against the anointing and against the anointed one. This, this movement to separate us from the anointed one, to separate us from Jesus, and even can actively resist the anointed one. This was what was going on in this woman's life, and it could be going on in some of our lives as well. Scripture says she was bound by the power of Satan, a destroyer, a deceiver, an accuser, a murderer. Some of you on this broadcast right now need to be hearing this. The enemy, Satan, he's an accuser, he's a destroyer, he's a deceiver, he deceives people, he destroys people's lives. This woman was bound with a spirit of infirmity. She had been like this for 18 years. And then Jesus called her. And he rebuked that spirit of infirmity. He laid hands on her and she was healed. She was able to straighten up for the first time in 18 years. And she was able to look up instead of looking down. And that is the posture that God wants us to have. Looking up instead of looking down. Looking up instead of looking down. In John chapter 8, Jesus begins to describe what it is to live from above or live from beneath. Jesus said, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So Jesus says that he's from above, people who do not know him are from beneath. Look what he says in the Message Bible. It says, you are tied down to the mundane. I am in touch with what is beyond your horizons. You live in terms of what you see and touch. I'm living on other terms. I told you that you were missing God in all of this. You're at a dead end. If you won't believe I am who I say I am, you're at the dead end of sin. You're missing God in your lives. Jesus was talking to these people about how they are living their lives. And so the question now comes to us, are you living from above or are you living from beneath? Is everything about your life focused on an earthly perspective? What you can see, what you can touch, what you can taste, what you can smell, what you can feel. Is that how you live your life? Or are you living your life from above? Viewing life from God's perspective. Seeing things the way he sees it. Responding the way he responds. That is the will of God, the plan of God for our lives. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 21 says that we are seated in Christ Jesus who is far above all principality and power. Far above. That's where we sit. We are far above. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 says that our citizenship is is in heaven. Oh, I know you're an American citizen, but as a, as a child of God, your citizenship is in heaven. Hebrews 3.1 says we are partakers of the heavenly calling, an upward calling. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14 talks about the power of the upward call, the upward call in our lives. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Here's the evidence that we're always focusing on things of this life. Our perspective is always earthbound. Here's the evidence. We're always worrying about committing sin. We're living with a sin consciousness. That is evidence that we are focused on this life. We're always living in fear of not being good enough. That's evidence of an earthly perspective, living from beneath. We're always striving to get the victory instead of just living in victory. That is evidence that we have an earthly perspective. Always whining and complaining and wallowing in self-pity and struggling in weakness. That's evidence that we are earthbound. We're living from beneath. Always captured by the cares of this life and our lives are being disrupted by distractions and cares, concerns. That is evidence that we are bound by this life beneath living with a heavy dose of condemnation. That is evidence that we're living from beneath. 
living from beneath. A mentality of failure, a poverty mentality. We're losing, we're going down, we're, we're lacking, we don't have what we need, we never have what we need. That kind of mentality is evidence that we are earthbound in our perspective. So Jesus is calling us to ascend to a higher place of life. To ascend to realize that we have been, according to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, that we have been raised up together with him and we sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where we live. We sit together with him in heavenly places. We live the ascended life. We are now born from above. And so it's only obvious that we would want to go to our origin, which is from above. I want you to be encouraged with this today and realize that you're called to live the ascended life. Jesus did not die for you, for you to live in defeat and struggling and striving to make something happen. He died on the cross and rose from the dead so that you could live the ascended life, so that you could live in that place of seeing everything from God's perspective. That's how he wants us to live. So be encouraged with that today as we begin this week. I love you so much. I'm grateful for you. Thanks for being on with me. Thanks for the hearts. Thanks for paying attention. I appreciate it so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're going to have a great day today. There's opportunities in front of you. Open doors. Open doors. Divine resources. Divine connections. You have favor with God and man. Miracles are happening for you today. In fact, I speak to sickness and disease in your body, and I command it to leave now by the authority of the name of Jesus. Sickness, you are defeated. Disease, you are destroyed by the authority of Jesus. Declare the victory in our lives today. I declare that we are living the ascended life. We are living from above and not from beneath by the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. God bless you.